Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yesha, if you're new here. I'm a diagnostic radiology resident in my final year of training, yay. And today we'll be talking about step one, going pass fail, and what this means for you. So what are the changes really being implemented? Obviously, we know it's going pass fail, which means that you will no longer receive a numerical score after January 26th. So if you take step one on January 25th, you're still going to have a numerical score. Um, if you take it on the 26th, it's going to be pass or fail. No numerical score. The other change that's, I think, less talked about, but maybe not quite as important, is that the number of attempts to pass is actually going from six to four. So how is step one being used until now? Well, basically, step one is obviously seen as the great equalizer. It's sort of controlled for your medical school, your medical education, your background, your history. I'm not saying that it's a perfect tool. It's really not a perfect tool. However, that's how it was used. And now programs don't have that tool anymore. This is basically going to shift the emphasis to step two. I mean, step two is going to become the new step one, and then at some point that might become pass-fail and things will become even more complicated. But that's really how it was utilized. And from the literature, what I've seen in terms of how programs justified utilizing step one was that there is actually a significant correlation between your performance on step one and your ability to pass your specialty board exams. I've seen papers in radiology, I've seen papers from OBGYN and even internal medicine so far, and I think that the more I would look for that, the more I would find. So that's really the justification on the program director perspective. Not saying that it's, again, a perfect surrogate. However, that is what was said in the literature. So I'll put links to those papers below in case you're interested in that, but I mean, it doesn't matter anymore because now step one will no longer be available to program directors. I think in the next five years, we're gonna see all these same papers, but for step two, if they don't already exist. So again, the emphasis will just shift, but here we are. That is the justification from the program director perspective. So what if you already took step one? Well, if you've already taken step one, you are going to have a numerical score. This does not erase your score from your record. So if you do have a fail or a low score, it's going to remain on your record, unfortunately, and it will not really, it will not be removed. So I think the next year we are going to have some applicants that have a step one score and then some that are pass fail. And I think that's going to be very interesting to see how that um, kind of plays out. I do think that program directors will use your step one score if you, like no matter your performance, to evaluate you. It's just another piece of information. It's something that program directors are very familiar with as well, so it will definitely be utilized if it's on your transcript. But if you are pass-fail, obviously I think they will be emphasizing step two and the rest of your application in a different way. I don't want to say more, but it'll be a different process. But if you've already taken it, it will still be on your transcript. So who does this hurt? I really think that this hurts DO students, MD students from newer medical schools or smaller medical schools that don't have an established reputation. And of course, internal, international medical graduates. I think IMGs, MD, MD students from smaller schools or DOs will definitely be the most affected by this change. And why is that? Well, I think that these are the students that most benefited from doing really well on step one. You know, let me give you an example. If you are a student at a new med school and you get a 230 on step one, versus a student at a top 10 med school who gets a 230 on step one. I think that a program director, anecdotally of course, all thing, everything else being equal, um, I think a program director would probably invite the top 10 medical school student for an interview over the newer medical school. However, if you are a student who from a new med school who gets like a 260 on step one, which we've seen a ton of this year I would say, versus a student from a top 10 med school who got a 230, I would say that now things are more interesting and you would actually be very likely to get an interview from this program regardless of your medical school. So that's how I think step one really helped medical students from newer med schools, DO students, etc. They, they can play at the same level as students from a top tier medical school, for example. Not saying that med school reputation is everything, but just saying that it is something that comes into play and I think is only also going to be more important as we go forward. So now with step one being pass fail, I think that that's really going to affect these new, these med students from smaller med schools, DO students, IMGs, because now they don't have the opportunity to necessarily prove themselves academically in the same way that we used to be able to. So I think that's a little bit concerning and a little bit disappointing, I would say, because as someone who went to a new med school, I think that, that having the opportunity is really important. Um, 
it's really important to be able to prove yourself, right? And show that you can compete with students from other medical schools. And I think that's really something that's going to be gone. And yeah, so in my opinion, I really think it's going to hurt DO students. I've already said this like six times, but that's what's going to hurt. This also negatively impacts people that are poor test takers, and I'll tell you why. It seems counterintuitive, right? Like it seems like, oh, this would help people that are poor test takers or who otherwise wouldn't have done well. However, with having step one, and step two in the mix, you had the opportunity to prove yourself. So even if you did get a low step one score, you could prove yourself by scoring really well on step two and show that improvement and show that you can still you know, perform, perform well on your specialty board exams. However, now if you are a poor test taker, you could still, you know, you'll still pass step one, but now all of the focus is going to be on your step two numerical score. And I think that's going to be added stress and anxiety. And now you have no way of having a backup plan of doing better in the future. You know what I mean? So I think that's really, really important and something that is no longer an opportunity for med students. And I think that's going to really, that will really, it's just disappointing. That's all I can say. It's just disappointing about it. And something that you have to keep in mind as you apply to residency programs. So what happens now? I mean, how do you prepare for residency applications when you don't have a step one score and you otherwise may have benefited from that? I think that the main thing is that the rest of your application is going to become so much more important. So this A starts with step two, right? Step two is going to become the new step one. Obviously, I'm surprised that no one thought about this, but there you go. So step two is going to be the new step one, and the rest of your application is going to also make a big difference. So your research activities, your volunteer activities, and I think people are really going to benefit from choosing a specialty earlier and earlier in med school because then you can have more opportunities in the specialty of your choice, and that will show your commitment to the field, etc. I think that will also be more important. Um, and unfortunately, I do think that med school rank and connections are going to become more important because now program directors don't have a way of comparing students like across the board the same way they did when they had step one unless you all have a step two score and i think that program directors are more likely to take someone that they know can perform well and without a step one score i do think that they will rely more on recommendations from their friends from people in the community they know from the you know specialty that they know from the schools that they know, et cetera. I think program directors will be more likely to take students from either home programs or people they've already interacted with. So I also think away rotations will become more important. But anyways, I think that's a whole video in and of itself about like how to optimize your, your application without a step one score. But I do think that all these other things will become much more important than they used to be. And I have a publication that I can link to from radiology at least that kind of talks about that a little bit. Anyways, I hope that was kind of insightful about how step one was used and how this will probably negatively affect a lot of medical students and how you really need to buff up the rest of your application to make sure that it looks, to make sure that you can secure the residency that you want, essentially. Um, I will make a video separately on what, to, what exactly to focus on, if that's something that people are interested in, but yeah, unfortunately, just wanted to make everyone aware of this, that like the rest of your application is going to be so much more important. Make sure that you're networking really hard because I do want to see people succeed and I don't want, especially students from new med schools, students without a home program, like that was a position that I was in. And I just, I'm so disappointed by all of this. And, and it's just a kind of a transitional time for everyone, for medical students who don't really know how this will affect them and, as, and program directors too. I think program directors are equally as confused about like, where to go from here. So anyways, I hope this was at least insightful. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.